may be able to set him down in that bowl right down there. Amazing. Like this is so cool. This is what we live for, man. Cool. So just to get to this point in the story has been a series of miracles mixed with a lot of hard work. Miracle number one was the medical advancement with my eyes and the ability just to be able to consider the dream of flying again. Miracle number two, that's the Hill helicopter. And miracle number three, well, that is yet to be determined on whether I can actually learn how to fly a helicopter or not. Utah Helicopters is one of the greatest flight training schools in the United States. It's nestled at the foot of the Rocky Mountains, featuring some of the most beautiful and challenging mountain terrain, giving student pilots real-world experience in good power management, high-altitude mountain flying, ever-changing weather patterns, cold, cold winters, and hot and low-density summers. It's surrounded by some of the world's most epic landscapes that create the ultimate helicopter playground. Utah is where I'm lucky enough to call home, and after a lot of due diligence and homework on different flight school options in the area, I chose Utah Helicopter for flight training. And I also specifically chose the owner and chief flight instructor, Keith Campbell, to help me along my journey. My name is Keith Campbell. I'm the owner, operator, and chief flight instructor here at Utah Helicopter. It's a risky thing that we do. We go up and we fly in the mountains and high density altitude. And so we got to make sure that everybody that comes through our program, we feel 100% comfortable before we give them the reins to go do that. And then worst case scenario, you call them on the wrong frequency. At Utah Helicopter, I could instantly tell on day one it was a place that I could thrive during flight school and beyond as a professional pilot. At our flight school, we have a zero compromise mentality when it comes to safety in our flying as well as our maintenance programs. I've been working on aircraft for about 50 years. Every 2200 hours the aircraft has to go through an overhaul, every 100 hours it's got to go through a major inspection and we do not abbreviate anything. Everything gets checked, everything gets rechecked and then we put it back together. This is my baby. I'm going to build it. When I'm done with it, it'll be the best flying helicopter there is. So 19 years ago, I graduated from flight school as a private pilot with my license from the FAA to fly airplanes. But now fast forward to today, and I can confidently say that learning how to fly helicopters is a whole different level. At the school, we operate a fleet of Robinson helicopters, R-22s, R-44s, and an R-66. And Clint is currently training in the R-22. And it's the common consensus that if you can fly an R-22, you can fly anything. I think if I had to try to explain what it's like aviating, navigating, and communicating while learning how to fly a helicopter, it's probably comparable to, to trying to learn how to juggle three bouncy balls in the air while riding a unicycle on top of a basketball. I think that comes close. When flying in a helicopter, the pilot is always engaging four different control movements. The first is the throttle control. This controls the speed of the engine and usually remains constant and is not always, but most often, controlled with a governor when in flight. The second set of controls are the tail rotor pedals, or often referred to as anti-torque pedals. These are used to control the tail rotor thrust and the yaw of the machine. This helps the pilot maintain the proper heading and direction of the aircraft while also counteracting the massive amount of torque that's created by the rotation of the main rotor system. The third is your cyclic control. This is the joystick or the handle that's located in the front of the pilot that controls the tilt of the swash plate, shifting the direction of the main rotor disc. This allows the helicopter to pitch forwards, backwards, and roll side to side. The last component is the collective. This is normally shared with the throttle and found on the left side of the pilot. This is used to collectively control the pitch of the spitting blades of the main rotor disc. 
creating either an increase or a decrease of vertical thrust, allowing the helicopter to go up and down. I think it's the concept of trying to master these four components in a helicopter that makes flying a helicopter so magical. It's kind of like the game of golf. You'll never master it, but it's so fun to try. Relaxing, breathing. There you go, breathing, oh, relaxing, yep. Yeah, hang on. You got it, you got it, you got it. Don't let it go too fast, slow it down with the left. You got it, you got it. Now you got to fix us, you got it. There we go. That's uh, geez. Gonna lower your power there. Uh, sorry. <laughs> it's all good, you got it. Oh, man. No, 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 this is right. I'm still blind. You right. still got controls. All right. here we go. How's flight school been so far? Flight school has been awesome, but also extremely intense. There's been moments of frustration with myself or moments where you hit a wall in your flight training. And then there's the moments where you just have the best day ever. And so it's been this constant roller coaster of, I'm doing it and I'm rocking this, to you're completely humbled and you go, I don't even know if I fly at all or I can do this in any way shape or form so it's been a lot of ups and downs usually in the first couple flights I have a great idea where somebody's at how fast they're gonna progress through the training and I think it was our second flight Clint was hovering down the taxiway with all three controls dude second lesson we're hovering with all the controls <laughs> <laughs> Is that, is, that, is that good? I don't know anything I think that's different. really good. You're making, you're kind of pissing me off a little bit. <laughs> and if you've ever done helicopter flight training, you know how rare that is. I mean, Clint's a drummer, so he's got this interdependence of his hands and his feet. He's got this flight simulator that he's using. One of the things that wasn't really an option for me when I started flight school 19 years ago was the innovation of virtual reality and how powerful the world of simulation has become and the technology that's available today versus even what was available two or three years ago. Every day, I would come home, I fired up the pro flight trainer, and in virtual reality, I would literally be able to sit in the same aircraft at the same airport and fly the same maneuvers and rehearse the same procedures that I learned that day at flight school. This setup has allowed me to make mistakes and to learn from those mistakes in an environment that has a reset button. All right, camera's on. Yeah. Don't screw up. <laughs> <laughs> just slowly start bringing it back. Let's just hold this heading left pedal. Just hold it right there. Let's come down to this intersection up here. Just work us down there. And The minimum hour requirement to solo a Robinson helicopter is 20 hours of dual instruction. And at the rate Clint is doing his training, I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be able to do it at 20 hours. The first time you solo, it's a big deal. You look over in the seat next to you and you realize, oh my gosh, like I'm the only one in the cockpit. That's a very real and pivotal moment in every aviator's life. Tomorrow, Clint is going to be flying solo in a helicopter by himself. I'm really proud of Clint. As he's pursued this dream, safety has always been a number one priority for him. On the back of his helmet is the names of our four children. And I think that that serves as a reminder to him, the goal is to always come home. How are you feeling? Are you nervous? Um, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. As a professional speaker, my job is talking to large groups of people on a stage. And to most humans, the thought of having to do something like that is absolutely terrifying. My life as a professional speaker demands a certain level of excellence. And I think in a way, that's also why I love aviation so much. It demands that higher sense of excellence in everything that you do. You know, I, I've got a family to raise now and I've got a lot of living still to do. And so am I nervous? Uh, yeah, a little, but it's because I care. Okay, Kel, how you feeling? Uh, 
Uh, good. Nervous. Excited. Um, super proud. Be honest. And super stressed out. <laughs> I got you, Keith. Got you loud and clear. Hey, rolling up. Here we go. This is it. Hands fast for traffic. Helicopter 960 Sierra Hotel is taking the active runway 30 for a right traffic pattern. I'm super proud of him. He's worked really hard. He's put in the time, he's put in the effort. He belongs up there. So proud of you, and also glad it's over. <laughs> <laughs> you did great. Today was absolutely incredible. I'll admit uh, there was some nerve-wracking moments when I initially started taking off. I looked down and my left knee was like <laughs> shaking, <laughs> but I, I settled in. And you go back to the basics and your training, and it just flowed. And it's where I'm supposed to be. It felt natural, it felt real, it felt exciting. And this was an experience that I never thought would happen for me. And it did. And I'll never forget it. Abraham Lincoln was the man who said that in the end, it's not about the years in your life that count. It's about the life in your years. For me, the thought of living a life without a, a whisper of a thrill here and there, without the excitement of taking a risk from time to time, or to even live a life completely void of harnessing the bravery that's sometimes necessary to step into the unknown with the hopes of what might be. You know, I, I don't know without experiencing those things if somebody could really say they've lived a life at all. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Finding Hill. I hope by now you're realizing this series is so much bigger than just flying helicopters. I wanna hear from you guys in the comments. I wanna know below what you enjoyed most about the episode, and I also wanna know when was the last time you felt like you were really living? What were you doing? Who were you with? I wanna know the details. Put them in the comments below. Let's inspire each other. I hope you'll like, subscribe, and share this series with the people that you love most. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Finding Hill.